What session are we in? Uh, this is location, location, hashtag, location. Awesome. Take it away, David. I'm hoping that there's somebody other than me to take it away with. Do you have something to say? Because I hate dominating the conversation. Uh, That's okay, it's just started. Oh. Locations are good. <laughs> okay, well, there. let's talk about location, because you're, of course, documenting this in the ecotest. Sure. Hello. Hi. Uh, we're talking about location. I don't know what we're talking about in regards to location. I was hoping that somebody else would want to talk about it more than me. But so okay, I have, I have a topic. Well, I have a few aspects okay. of it, but I'm going to start with location on the wiki. Right. Location is a key aspect of checking an event post. It is also sometimes an aspect of post in general where a note or photo or video post was posted from. Now, ironically, on that page, the location page is an example of something I did, which I didn't post there. I just find interesting that other people do that. But the question that I keep asking since my current project is enhancing what I've done in the past about location is, when does it make sense to tell somebody where you are? I'm yes. starting with the simplest question. That's one of my comments as well. Okay. So, I, you know, 90% of the time, the reason why I don't post on my website is I ask who cares. I have this 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 large bar. Meanwhile, um, last week somebody took a picture of me, and for the first time in two years, I updated my profile picture, and I got what, even though that isn't an event, I got 15 comments on that. Oh, new picture, which surprised the heck out of me. People hopefully know what I look like by now. They're keeping track of me. But the question that I always ask is, when is it relevant? So if you're going to an interesting place, maybe if you have a photograph, but if you're just posting a note somewhere, is it relevant where you are? Well, I mean, if you ever want to go back and look and figure out well, where you were, well, it goes to sure. public versus it goes to public versus private. So maybe you attach a location to everything but you only show the location where it makes sense. And you have a location that you don't actually say where it is. For example, um, I had a, an idea that I never did anything with, which was private locations, which would basically be a name, but no actual physical. So home, uh, Google uses home work and I hear they're putting in gym. Mm -hmm. So basically a location that exists to say you're out of place that you're at often, but you don't want to tell people exactly where you live, for example, it's most common. Like, Just Google. Uh, Good luck. <laughs> By the way, if you show up to my house, I'll start running. No, I mean, you just want to say Google the way you live, not everyone. Else. Yeah. <laughs> but you understand the general idea. Yeah. Sometimes you want a location where you don't want people to know exactly where it is. Oh, yeah, but you yeah. want people to know, I'm, I'm at home. I'm at home. I'm at work. Right. I'm at the gym. And sometimes you want to know down to the millimeter exactly where you are. Right. Like, find me in at this location in the park for the barbecue. Yeah, which goes, that's usually the event. Wow. So oh, location right, yeah. attached to an event, as opposed to a location attached to any type of post. Right. And then you have the check-in, which is basically the express thing yeah. down here. Right. Which has no other context. So you have a note where you can have context of a location. You have a check-in where basically the location is your entire reason for creating that thing. Sorry, what was the Etherpad? Uh, the Etherpad is location. Oh, just location. Okay. Just add to it. Yeah. So abstract location. You you want to hide the physical. Well, yeah. Basically, some people want it. Then, of course, the, does it doesn't make sense to display a textual based location. You also have a map based location. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, so I what? Yeah. We're we're growing here. And it can actually be fairly large. So my my uh, use case is I want to uh, basically build my own Doppler. Do you remember that website? So I basically ju I want I just oh, want, want to, the the so I just want to tell people um, in which city I am right now, so that other people who are also in that city or who live in that city can get that information, but not exactly like so. That it can be a very so like, you want low resolution location. You don't want a check-in post. You want a post attached to the entire website. Well, that's kind of my question. Like, well, your website being your identity. 
Uh, your website is like an event, but not was really. that what Doppler did? Or uh, so do, yeah, Doppler was basically um, you you publish um, like your a calendar of locations that you are going to visit, and you can also set um, privacy settings for like for example, don't show my all of my history, but show like I'm I will be in Portland in July. Mm. Like that was actually the, like you wouldn't even say certain dates; you would just say I'm in Portland in July. So anyone who follows you. Um, who lives in Portland would then get a notification and say, hey, Basti is coming to Portland in July, uh, you should pick him. Right. Well, Aaron has his, uh, he was showing it earlier, the, he has the blue dot that indicates he's still at the same location that he posted something at. I'm not sure if you caught that when he was doing it. No, no. When he did his demo earlier. Cool. It was um, one of the things on there. But you have also, a, you know, other options like that. Like you could have a, somewhere in the works, it says last scene where it figures out where did you last post from and actually says to some degree where you were. But that's the thing, I don't want to really, the, the post has a time and date and yeah. probably a precise location. Well, the question and is. And it's more like in advance, you want to like yeah. post. What but you also get, be in you mentioned the term precise location. Yeah. What if you don't want a precise location? Yeah. I want to tell people I'm in Portland, but I don't want to tell them that I'm in the Mozilla office right. in Portland. So, yeah. so what level of granularity do you actually want to do and exactly and what's your so can you use the resolution of the of the GPS coordinates like just use well less well you, you get well, the, that, I, I've always been confused about that because there's always a center yeah <laughs> no what I'm saying is I've yeah. I've always been confused if you have a set of GPS coordinates exactly how you would put them how you would basically reduce the granularity how many digits do you take off yeah for example I have and different cities are, it can be a here. village and it's vastly smaller than. Yeah, uh, I just want, I'm just looking here to see the geolocation stuff that I was working on earlier, how many decimal points it goes to. Mm -hmm. My next point is, I mean, if you. 15 decimal points. If you check into some place that's abstract and there's anyone else there checking in with more detail, then they, then you really don't have any privacy I mean, you're your location can be inferred. Well, um, it depends on the location. Yeah. But again, the most common use case for an abstract location is home. Yes. Uh, is, there, uh, is there anybody else checking into your home who would provide? What if you have a kid and they post a photo yeah, of a but home and it because, has all the geodata? Yeah, and it goes back to your decision versus somebody else in your household's decision. Mm -hmm. You're saying, I don't want to have this included. That doesn't mean that it's impossible to find. It's, if you're many organizations, it is not impossible to find that information. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of databases you could buy that probably would have it in there. Mm -hmm. People are surprised at how much, let's say, magazine subscriptions gained during the 80s and 90s when it used to be that they would sell all the information to other organizations. And that sort of stuff still goes on. But, well, so I guess my point is is how how hard is it to do an abstract location versus what benefit is it? Well, the be the benefit is you don't want to make it easy for people to know where you are. Yeah, you know, there's a philosophy that I I've used in a different context where it was basically we were trying to prevent somebody from doing something, but we knew that if they tried really hard, they could do it. So our decision was we, uh, we could either try really hard to stop them from doing it or say one or two people might get through our dragnet, but we would save a boatload of time trying to stop them. Uh, well, okay, so, I guess as, so, so it's the as same someone thing. who's developing a location plugin, how hard would it be to add abstract locations versus? Well, an abstract location is one that has no coordinates, but just has a name. Well, I, I, so, so you I mean, I think item. personally I'd still want the geodata in the database. I just want to be able to say, oh, you know, this, this is home, don't just to say, just say home. No, just a setting not to display information that's in the database, but is there. Well, but I, but I, I want to do it for one place, right? Yeah. Or for one post or form. Um, I actually have it done. Oh, you have it now? I have three settings, um, public, private, and text only. So text only is basically the name, but nothing else. So I already right. put in, I put that into my mm -hmm. site. Which what was the three things again? Um, well, two of them come from the old WordPress standards, which are already there when I started. Oh. Um, public and private. Public, and I added a third one, which is text only. 
which is basically just a description. Mm -hmm. And I might actually change it and just say description only. So it won't tell me where I am. It will just use a one-line description of what's. Right. It's, oh, it's uh, without the title or the name of the place. It's just well, a description of the location. It's just text box. Right. So it's basically whatever I filled in. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing I'm having would be basically the location of one of bookmarks. I have nowhere to store it, so I could reuse the same location. Right now, each post has a field for it. And I want to be able to pull that the same information every time and link them together. But I haven't finished building that yet. So that's so, basically venues. So what I suggested would that be an event, um, like for example, traveling to cities and well, announcing it. Yeah. Um, well, an event. Point, um, you have three, two different criteria. You have event. Event is a single fixed point in time. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. What if I? Yeah. Um, what you may want is a trip. No. Yeah, trip. Yeah. yeah. So an event basically says that you're going that something's going to happen at a specific time between X and X. Now a trip basically is a journey where you can have not only one single location, you have multiple locations and multiple durations. Yeah. Um, Aaron has that on his website. Um, uh, I don't have it. I'd like to. Yeah, there's nothing on the wiki for trip. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what he put it under. He might have put it under travel. Uh, I don't remember how he classified it, but I know we've talked yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, it's under travel. Uh, oh, it's travels. Travel yeah. plans? Travel is a post type about plans to change location in the future. Okay. So uh, he it actually mentions so Stoppa as past example. Yeah. So he's basically, um, he posts travel plans. Very detailed with time. Yeah, but he also posts, you know, wrap ups afterwards. For example, if you go to AaronParecki.com slash travel, you would see his trips. And the trips that you'd see are actually in the past. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. I'd love to have a future. He does also the, 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 the flight from Amsterdam to Portland and back. You see it as the third post on that page. He actually posted that months ago. So I knew he was coming to the Netherlands here uh, because he posted that one. On travels, it's not. It's I believe it's only uh, so he posts uh, flights. For, he has already booked in the future, and he's only showing it on this page. He's uh, hiding it from all the others. Well, he has. Okay. No, he has future. And he, uh, he has a future itinerary type thing. Yeah. He has a pet trip. Um, his travel stuff is in the past. Mm -hmm. So travel is the journey after it happened. Where, but he also has yeah. one where you can see his upcoming events. This one isn't. Oh, uh, it's another one. I know. I know. I've seen it because you know, check-ins, photos, rides. He had, but the, why wouldn't the travel be uh, like? Why couldn't he do the travel post type in the future? Just because. No, he I believe he did. I it, yeah, I think it's similar, but it gets confusing because he has so much stuff. Yeah, but I know I, I know I've seen it because I used to look at his itineraries when I was wondering if he was going somewhere. Well, it's yeah. Jackson's itinerary. No, I, I don't think he has one right now. If you go to armparecki.com slash 2017 and then uh, 07, so for June, uh, no, sorry, it's July, and then oh, you right, see yeah. uh, empty calendar with one uh, event. So that's one way to discover uh, public Posts in the future, and there's no arrow going further into the future. So I think this is his most futures post. Right. And as I said, I know I've seen one, but he just may not have booked anything yet. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the, to Amsterdam and back was the last one, uh, and he already did it, so it's not in the future anymore. There are also trips within Amsterdam on like a train, and yeah. it looks almost like a GPS track because yeah, um, that would, I'm not be sure this will like it's not straight lines between points. It looks like tracks. Yeah, especially the 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 one there are some. But the the third one. Uh, the fourth one, this has like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one has a weird thing, and I know that there is a uh, tunnel over there, so that's yeah. probably uh -huh. why it yeah. does that. He does do yeah. documented as a list of one of the things that he does. 
Um, if you go under docs.p3k.io slash example dash posts, mm -hmm. he has a list of all of the posts that he's set up, and one of them is called itinerary. Uh, okay. I'm guessing that the reason why you can't see any of these, he has none right now. Yeah, he also, uh, if I you go to Quill, you can also create one yourself. Uh, well, that's where he creates all the stuff. Oh, okay. I, I think okay. I can also share my screen. No, that's not the button. Which is the button? I don't know if I have Quill set up. On yeah. There. Yeah. Let me up. yeah. Yeah, you are. It's yeah. a little plain there. I can see it. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and you have different types. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah, but he also... You can also you... choose different things of, yeah. So and maybe... Quill has documentation also if you look at their... Yeah. One of the nice things Aaron has put his, at his documentation. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I could create a plugin for no one that actually... Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what is matter. what are you sending. That's why you can create a plugin. Yeah, well, that's why I suggest the other page, docs.p3k, which shows basically all of the custom types of markup he's come up with, including the non-official stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. So under there, he has... Oh, under... Yeah, docs. You can docs see the... Eight, with... um, he has something called oh, uh, example it's... posts, and one of them is an itinerary where he shows the how he sets it up. So what he has is a properly called itinerary with the individual nested types called H likes. Okay. Is it a trick? No. Uh, go under oh, example posts, yeah. Example posts and then itinerary. Mm -hmm. That one. Because I remember we were having this conversation that it would have been an indie web camp in Cambridge where he was talking about this and the issue of how, you know, how do you set up a, a basically a post that has two different locations and documents that are in between them. This is one of the things he came up with. And this, I never talked him into setting up Posse to Flight Memory, which does this. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it. It's basically a site where people document their air travel. Mm -hmm. So there it is. We're basically transit type origin destination. Yeah, well, the thing is you have to pass, if you want to build something like Doppler, you would have to pass the, um, basically, the, if there's no new entry, it would assume that he's just staying in Amsterdam forever. Well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have to add actual trips instead of just saying, like, oh, I'm going to fly to Amsterdam in July. Yeah, well, there are other options. Yeah. It's always a matter of how much information you want to share and at what point. Yeah. So here he has itinerary posts that appear and then they disappear once the journey is taken uh -huh. and replaced by the trip post. Right. Did you find that itinerary once? I found the, his documentation of it, but I don't know where. I assume when you look up the page, there'll be nothing there. I believe this one is, uh, see if I can, like the, the one with the, the, the nice bow. I believe that's well, an itinerary post. Uh, according to this, mm -hmm. if, um, if you go to the travel page in IndieWeb.org, he has three examples of pages that he's used in the past. I'm on that one. Oh, um, he has past data. So there are three examples and they're all slash travel. My guess is the reason why we're not seeing them again is they've already passed. So it's not showing any upcoming. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's a post. Um, but yeah. I'm going from here to there. Yeah. So basically, as from what I what I'm guessing, as soon as it passes, he updates it to show map and everything. But in the past, it would have shown just the details of travel. Right. Nice though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As I said, I'd like one of those someday. If I could master all of the necessary pieces. In order to do location over time, you need support for multiple locations attached to a post, which is not impossible. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, also, like, yeah, because you have, I, 
I basically have an infinite Malta Lake trip since I gave up my apartment seven years ago. So yeah, <laughs> there's no the going software. home, yeah. right? So there's, uh, so you're always going somewhere. One more, yeah. So, so that changes the entire philosophy of how you would want to mark up what's going on, right? It's last, you know, last seen in Amsterdam, last seen in Portland, and the way you could do that is basically, at least in theory, have it look for the last time you posted the location and display that somewhere. At, for example, on the header of your site, last last yeah. reported location, not last actual location, but right. yeah. was the last time you posted where you explicitly said where you were was Portland. Right. So you could have been through three things in the interim. That's just the last time you said anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, the interesting part for me is the notifications to people who follow me at, like, who can say, like, I live in Munich. And then when I randomly, when I go to Munich, I don't have to call like 20 people. That's an interesting idea. <laughs> That's what Where, you know, every time, you know, the, you have, basically that anytime you enter a city, your website notifies people, hey, I've been to your city. Yeah. Well, this is actually what uh, on, of, uh, not on your swarm, what swarm is doing. Uh, if you check in, it reaches out to other people in the neighborhood and they get a notification of, oh, he is there. Uh, it's hard yeah, to replicate on, on any yeah. web thing, but it's 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 nice functionality. Yeah, unfortunately, just for the neighborhood, not for the whole um, city. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, when I was at my parents in Leiden, I received notification about Aaron checking into various stuff. So oh, nice. yeah. Okay. Either way. I don't know. Anybody going to build this this weekend? Anybody want to build air travel? I've always wanted that one. But honestly, I'm, I don't travel that much air, but I don't travel as much as people. But I still would like to build travel just because I find it interesting to do. I can never remember when I went and where. I just have this image of combing of after I build it, combing through every email confirmation from every trip I've taken that's still in my back email and loading in after the fact. You know, like, oh, in 1999, I flew from here to here. Yeah. I don't think I'd ever actually do that, but it's nice to think about. But there was also a discussion, according to this, about sharing travel plans back in 2013. And there was a discussion at Dusseldorf in 2016 also about travel. So travel and location seems to come up a lot because even if you look at the Etherpad, there was a discussion at Nuremberg this year and there was a discussion at Brighton in 2015. So a lot of people seem interested in location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, what is the what is the nut that doesn't seem to be crackable with this one? I mean, isn't it going to be really dependent on which platform you're using? If it displays well, no. nicely. Well, no. The display. Is, the question is, is it a display issue? Is it a decision issue? Why is it that we keep talking about check-ins and locations? What is the thing that everybody is finding challenging about it? Because it was just a matter of, of building it in terms of just saying one day, tomorrow I'm going to build check-ins. Then well, if people could build it, people say, I'm going to implement web mentions. There's not as much discussion about that. I mean, isn't a trip just more structured data built on a, a location? Well, a trip basis? is a journey between two. It, so basically, it's a post with two location properties, a start location and an end location. Yeah, and probably a lot of points in between where you were, like the exact route, as well, Aaron has. Well, he, he likes to track um, his location by the minute. Most yeah. people in the journey would track, I started here, I ended here. Maybe so, there'd be an intermediate point if you stopped there, but if you just kept going, yeah, so I found this, um, this one 
uh, page, the Düsseldorf one from 2016 says that he's actually using a, a tracking app that has buttons for start and end of trip, and then the app uploads the GPS track up and marks the last leg. Having you read his bio, he's known for having tracked his location in five minute intervals since whatever year. I mean, a trip could also be to the start and an end, and then there's a path too. Well, yeah, but the question is, is that is the path relevant to everybody? Yeah. yeah, I mean, for most people, the path is only relevant when the path itself is an experience. For example, if you were walking, I'll use an example in Boston, there's Type a thing. freedom show. Yeah. So basically, it's a path that passes by a bunch of different sites. So if you wanted to document mm -hmm. the journey between those sites, you would have a trip that had more than two legs mm -hmm. because you'd be going between locations. But a journey has to start and a finish and possibly intermediate points, but intermediate points are optional, not mandatory. Sometimes they're relevant, sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. For Aaron, he wants to know which direction the plane is going. Which yeah, I, find I also I also have this. Uh, uh, I, I was running earlier, uh, like yeah, now got injured, but uh, uh, I was tracking my running with a GPS watch, like this one. And yeah. uh, I uploaded all those the, the, all the data to Strava, uh, which is a silo for keeping track of running and cycling. Yeah, I'm using uh, that. And that's one of the thing, the location-based things that I kind of want to get back to my own site also. Oh yeah, right. I'd be but that's another that. kind of trip because it's that's more about it's, it's more about it's the journey, not even about the location, but more about oh I did this much. Uh, in the metadata. Or miles in certain amount of time. Yeah. But you're back to you and don't even care with about like the start location, you care about the length. Yeah, and also metadata yeah. like the and power and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So how, how maybe you do fair. care about the path and you wanna I don't know, you take different paths and That's sometimes at the end Some, you wanna sometimes you care about sometimes you care about the journey, sometimes you don't care about yeah. the intermediate pieces of the journey. Right. It's like anything else, you could have granularity on anything. So do we have a post site for something like running or cycling? Um, I think it would be a trip. Trip. It, it does include location uh, and ideally like like Aaron does it basically tracks location like uh, it does include a route. Um, yeah, I can share my screen again. But it would be its own post type, I guess, right? Well, bear in mind H trip is not a, um, I'm not going to say approved because it's not really approval process. He's really the only one using H trip, so it's not his markup is experimental. Yeah, and if there's no one you, uh, yep, using, he fixes it. if there's no one checking the on running, then we would also create a new one that so far we could be the only user then. Yeah, but I would say H trip would work for running. Yeah, I would say while technically, if nothing is adopted by multiple people, it'll never become an accepted standard. But if mm -hmm. you want to adopt something completely different than somebody else is doing something similar, then you're going to create more confusion. Yeah, but trip is very different. It's not, well, you're trip, not doing a trip. Um, well, oh, so a route is a JSON file? It's more of like a, um, a, yeah. like a workout or something? Sure. It's uh, an act of going to a place and returning, a journey or excursion, outing, jaunt, yeah, but vacation, it's... visit, tour, journey, expedition, voyage, drive, run. But the location is not the like the fitness activity is like your is your like type of what you're doing. Yeah, but I think that the book that rather than expanding to another piece of vocabulary, trip works. The properties change. Well, now the you could go with the, the the things you you like. I mean, a, a trip. The, the, the one of the things is the time, the duration of of a thing. Uh, and and the the the, the actual but Aaron has those Aaron has distance and he has duration, yeah. Uh, sure. And the, those are kind of if if you if you just walk to the supermarket, then it's kind of yeah you don't really care about how long you did it and how how much. But if you run through something, then 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 those so they're the same things, but the. I'm I mean, they're all the, they're always there, but you, you the focus depends on what you actually want to track. Yeah. Well, I just checked. He um, for those for his rides, his bike rides, which are the same basic ideas of run. He's using H trip 
as the top level property and then he's just using different properties under it. Oh, okay. What's the... Oh, I just looked at one of his last pages. Like right? So what, what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, that it's, he's using HTRIP as an experimental property. So what are TRIP silos? I mean, so what, isn't a lot of well, I adoption... Flight, I mentioned flight memory. Flight memory? Flight memory is basically a silo where you report where what flights you've been on. It enables you to keep track of where you have flown and then produce maps showing your flight routes, showing your total time in the air, distance flown, and types of aircraft and airlines you've been on. So it's a logbook of your personal flights if you're interested. They'll even sell you a poster everywhere you've been if, yeah. based on your data. But it's an interesting idea. And then you get to things like what well, Runkeeper, I think, is and there are a few others. Are any of those it has you know, a bunch of APIs. Data out for yeah, usually. A lot of the exercise ones that are paired with a device have APIs. Yeah, Strava has one for sure. Um, and Strava has one of the better APIs. Yeah. I mean, so then something like own your trip would. I that that's basically what I would put tomorrow, maybe like on your on your Strava. <laughs> yeah. Um, and send it as a, so the problem is just, yeah, you send it as a web mention to where, <laughs> like nothing can display the trip. No, it's, <laughs> it's a, a micro pub endpoint, like on your, uh, on your Grum and on your uh, Swarm are both uh, sending the whole post as a micro pub uh, request. Yeah, right, but, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, micro pub, but uh, something oh, also yeah, has yeah. to actually be able to receive a trip post type uh, micro pub. Um, yeah, and but that's up to the, to, up to, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the, uh, there are two projects, right? That they're yeah. one getting the data out of the thing, and then the, the other is teaching your site how yeah. to do a thing. Exactly. And uh, I might uh, uh, this, this want to do the, the display first. Yeah. What's he doing for the track? It. Because it looks to me like it's just images, but is he actually attaching the whole GPX track in his mic in his like? Or I, I asked him earlier today in one of the many channels we got now. Uh-huh. Uh, so I mean, he's, because GPX is a lot of, like, you, you probably just want a link to the GPX or something in the actual post. Yeah, he's, he's not, he, his answer was that he's storing uh -huh. metadata in the post and he is, store, he is treating the, the actual trip as a, like an image. You, you also don't add the image to the post file, you link to the image. And so yeah. he links to the, he's somewhere, somewhere in all these things I asked him. But. Yeah, there's a, he's using H measure and P distance and all kinds of micro yeah. formats for the But if you look at slash workout on the numbers on the wiki, there's an interesting mm -hmm. list here of silo examples, including one, yeah. Yeah. mapmyrun.com, which claims to be able to aggravate fitness posts and activities from nearly all other fitness silos, then provides access to them with an API. Which one was that? Mapmyrun.com. So according to this, they have a standard API. Damn, I'm a psychist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's the same basic idea. Yeah, but they don't have the psychic data then. Yeah, but it mentions a few things here. There's an application about Strava. Oh, apparently that's... Apparently uh, we have a Strava page. That's, apparently that's an Under Armour like, um, advertising thing. For, yeah, according to this, we do have a Strava page also. Oh, wow. Where it says yeah. how to do it, it identifies how to do a bulk export or an activity export or third party tools uh, to sync GPS files between a number of destinations. And Strava offers an API with a healthy, healthy ecosystem. Yeah, it's probably if, uh, like it's probably possible to get likes out of it, but it's probably also possible to like other people's posts on Strava using the API. I mean, you can do all those things on. Uh, Facebook nowadays, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's more, it's, uh, it allows more than Facebook at the moment. Yeah. Oh, not included. Oh, those are not, yeah, you can't export them, uh, your own likes. Not included, kudos, comments, photos. 
Yeah, this is all about export, but if you want yeah, to put in the, more data, the then you can posse your uh, your likes to it. Uh, um, yeah, I think you want to use the API and some which which uh, I just find it interesting that um, the go to place anytime we're looking to figure out how to do something is always Aaron. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. sort of I've been sort of joking just, about that within just a, for, for a long time now. It's, yes, if I'm going to do if I'm going to do something, Aaron's already done it. One of these days, I will find a project to do that Aaron hasn't already done. Yeah, I I have it. I have some, but I'm very in doubt uh, that it, <laughs> those are good additions to the whole thing. Like I've got read posts, so I, I if I finish a book, I post a read off and then a ESPN uh, uh, link, and that's that's something Aaron doesn't do. But um, yeah, but it's hard to be ahead of somebody who has a head start. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, they, they even got webhook events. Who had? Uh, Strava. Oh, nice. Oh, that's very yeah, cool. You can, you can just call it. Yeah, there is just, they will tell you if there is a new run. Yeah. So it's, it should be fairly easy to build that part. Yeah, it's super easy. You, that, that you can, you don't even need a server. You just, you can build serverless. You just uh, have Yeah, you just wait for them to tell you. Yeah, and transform yeah. the thing to a micro platform. The hardest hardest part would be to uh, yeah. do all the uh, indie auth stuff mm -hmm. and keeping all the uh, access tokens compared to users and stuff. I mean, if you yeah. want to enable this as a service, like Aaron does, and these kinds of things, uh, that would that that's probably harder than the the actual sending of the micro Yeah. Someone told me Bridgie is open source. Yeah. So that, that should be. And then it already has all the, like, you can just copy OAuth code and use it for Strava, right? Because it's just OAuth too. So oh. um, so that way, you yeah. can just, it's probably easier I to have just add to Bridgie. <laughs> well, if we go to the Bridgie to add Strava to Bridgie already, but oh, okay. uh, Bridgie is in Python and I really can't read it. So it's, yeah. Okay. It did not so succeed. You, I want to try to, again. But. To the repo, it actually tells you what you would need to develop on it. Yeah, but uh, so I, I thought I'm not stupid. I can do that. But and, it's yeah. turned out it's harder oh, than so I thought. So maybe I'll do it for you tomorrow because I'm a Rubyist, so it should be easy to oh, know from yeah, me. Yeah, if, oh, yeah. I have Ryan here if you want to talk to him. Yeah. He might be able. So do you. Yeah, I don't think he, he would necessarily do it, but he'd certainly give you advice. As you, since he's going to be in the room. Right. Yeah, my main issue is that I'd have to implement a plugin for known to actually show it on my website. Well, one problem at a time. Yeah. Once you're storing it, you can store it, and then display comes later. Yeah, and and adding Richie to it would only give you the likes and comments on the Strava things, right? Not time. the actual... Oh, it Richie doesn't, doesn't do the actual posts. What? Oh yeah, that's yeah. So so, all those other services like own your RAM and own your thing, th those are a, a different kind of uh, services. What about something like if this and that? Um, is that Strava? You can probably do that as well. But if this and that has Strava, so you could just use the um, the WebMaker um, applet and post MicroPub. I think that's what I'm doing for Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's also. Uh, you just need the. Yeah, but for me, for me also, the hardest part is to teach my, uh, yeah, in my case, Kirby blog, how to how to handle a, a trip. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not not hard, but it's yeah, it's work. It would be nice to have a common uh, temp because it's a lot of data for like for a running or cycling trip. It would be nice to have a common template where you can at least just copy the HTML for the for all the like you you know numbers and units and distance and mm -hmm. all that stuff. 
um, and just maybe post that on the wiki so anyone can like implement it from there and you just like, yeah Aaron's thing looks good yeah that's pretty good just needs uh, I don't know a few more things like for cycling I, I, I'd want um, for example um, power average power that stuff Oh yeah. It's yeah. all just numbers. It's all just numbers. Yeah, those could be uh, an H measure, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a number and a unit. Yeah. And it's you, you can fetch almost anything in in a number and a unit. That, uh, yeah. What did it, if this the net have uh, Strava? Oh, Strava, so yeah. you can... So it would, so you can probably, let, let me connect it. Um, so, and then it also has um, a thing called WebMaker. It's, uh, it's, you can send uh, custom post requests with custom That's bodies nice. that you can build from the incoming data. So in theory, if, if the integration has all the fields that you want, you could just set up um, a recipe there. And actually, you could share the recipe, and then other people could just use it as well um, in order to send micropub for every single income. Yeah, if it, can you set a header? That's what you uh, need. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one thing. Wait, what was it? I think you can't set headers. Yeah, because you can um, send a access token in the post request, but okay. then you have to use then you can't use the JSON format, and you cannot uh, use the, uh, yes. the like the nestled H cards and stuff. You cannot do the nestled H uh, things without the JSON. So that 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 might be a problem. Uh, yeah. You have to, in order to use it with JSON, and you, yeah, you both you you need that access token. Okay, so I'm using it for, I'm using it for Instagram for sure. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm not yeah, sure. If it, yeah, I'm not sure. Instagram it would work without. I, I think. I, I think you can get away with just to post uh, the, like the form encoded data. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the difference. It's using form encoded data. With I believe there is no yeah. way to use a JSON with a access token. I mean, maybe some people do support it, but it's not in the spec, so you have to check with Aaron if, yeah. Yeah. Sure. We're kind of off topic when it comes to location, right? We're well, to some degree, we're talking about yeah. trips, which don't tell us that. Yeah, we, yeah it's, it's kind of, yeah getting ahead of, of things you might do with location tomorrow. Uh, yeah, which I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, like, I, can I, yeah, I still share my screen so I can show my own site. I added this uh, thing where I uh, now have a uh, page per day, and it's actually already Sunday over here. Um, uh, so this was this is for you today still, and uh, I kind of because I do check in a lot now. I got these icons at the top, but which which are some of them are check ins. I kind of want to extend this with a sort of a a a map of where I was at that day. So it could be zoomed out if I was on places that are far away from each other. Like in in this in, the, in this particular day, it would be all the Netherlands because I've been to both sides of it and then on other days it would be more into the city because I only visited one city on that day but I, I kind of like that idea of having a map there I don't know how to how to properly display that how to incorporate this in this design yet but that's one thing I wanted to do with location not sure if I will do that tomorrow Wow, there's actually a ton of Strava system that's... Yeah, but because Strava is so, it's so one, easy... It's one to add DJ Khaled, all I do is win uh, like a song to your cycling playlist if you beat a friend's time on a segment. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're fast on one of the road segments. Mm -hmm. Too good. <laughs> I 
maybe we should wrap up at this point. We still do have a few more minutes. I'm not sure if there's anything else on anybody's mind. So there you have it. High level things that you use locations in? I guess trips pretty much seem to cover it. But Well, there's trips, there's events, there's check ins. So yeah. You can basically edit SGO to any post type, right? Well, yes. Like, a note with a location is a note with a location. Yeah. The idea being that it's context on the note. Right. Whereas a check in is location is everything. A trip is two, or as we discussed, it could be more than two mm -hmm. locations, basically a journey which is symbolized by an origin and a destination, which are two points, and any intermediate points that are relevant. And then we covered basically exercise, which consists of a route where you also want to have your location over time. Right. Did travel. we figure out the, how to, what the proper way is to set um, resolution? No, that's always been an issue. Right. Yeah, and it's actually a hard one also. Yeah. Uh, because if you just if you if you add, yeah remove zeros like if you remove digits then it sort of means that you're removing yeah there's yeah you you actually moving the location on that point uh, which is kind of what you want but yeah yeah that's one I wanted to ask if anybody had solved yeah which is, you know, most sites have a way of sort of anonymizing it, but I don't know if we've ever come up with anything as a group, as a recommendation. For the anonymizing? For basically, well, again, you don't want to anonymize to the point at which you can't see anything. But let's say that you are in Portland. I'm using the example here. So you want to say I'm in Portland, and you want to show a map of Portland. Right. But you don't want to show a map identifying the exact position of Portland you're in. Yeah. So how do you do that? Mm -hmm. So you have your GPS coordinates, which let's say are delivered by your phone. How do you turn that into, instead of a specific location down to the millimeter, how do you turn that into a general location? Right. So I, I think map? it always, um, so the, like you could enter anything, right? So I think it always comes down to basically the geocoding and where you get the data from, like um, especially for for your input. Like you could say, do you, like, you, there's different databases that you can ask for. Give me information about Portland, for example, city limits, which would give you the, yeah. you know, even the shape of the. You can the do that. You can convert it to text and then convert the text back to a location. I mean, you would That's start with saying that anyway, right? That's sort of an interesting one to say. I'm going to look up my location, figure out where I am, take parts of my the textual version of my location, and then reverse look it up back to where so I came where, from. Yeah. No, I mean, you it's get one specific I... point, but you will get, always get that specific point. So, it, yeah, you kind of, people then know, from, oh, you said that specific point. He will not be at that specific point. But you can find out what, if you said, like, I want to say, I want to just say the city, for example, as resolution, like, you can, so depending on the database, you can actually find out what city your point is in and then use that as the location. Um, so that's the where it comes down to like your data source and database that you're using for the locations. Which was always, I, I don't know, I spent two days researching like what I could use for that and didn't come to any conclusion. <laughs> There's a few out there with massive data sets, but it's not easy to find one that's actually easy to use and has clean data. Well, if we, if I, if we may return to Aaron, uh, Aaron has uh, atlas. Dot Pec.io, which is his, uh, uh, yeah, his API for getting maps, and I'm getting my maps from him too now. I do cache them. That's a good thing to do. But yeah, <laughs> and this, yeah, this is just an easy way to get to get information about. Uh, I mean, you get the name, you get timestamps, time zones, all kind, even the weather. Uh, I, it's timing out for me right now. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Atlas.io. No, no, atlas.pk. Oh, yeah, gpk. Uh, .io. Yeah, he has uh, everything that, that like oh. this. This is go to domain to add stuff under. Wait, Atlas? Sorry. It's in the uh, Ethernet as well.
So it's a subdomain under 3pk.io. I mean, we're back at the topic of what what does Aaron, but this is one yeah, thing you yeah, could use. As I said, we always end up there. Yeah, it's it's yeah. So it's is there anything about uh, oh, there making your location more granular in the indie web? We None can... that I've seen. Uh, so there's actually source code for this. Uh, so then uh, maybe we should write a entry about. Uh, what would it be called? Location. I did. Three years ago. Oh, textual description. Location and notes describe some of the issues in adding a location to a note. And below it, textual oh. description. To use the site of Indie Webcam Cambridge, the most common textual description is locality, region, and country. Yeah, the kind of said to city. Yeah. But the problem is the utility of displaying coordinates. So this is based on a few things. It's based on Jeremy Keith's methodology, where he shows coordinates sometimes. And he considers basically based on what information he has, the granularity of his, and he does it in reverse. But the question is, what is useful? And that's the question that we've never been able to get a very good answer on in terms of consensus. What is useful location information? Yeah. Also, then maybe that's one of the action items. Like, uh, I always consider it one. It's further discussion on this topic of what makes, what is the level, correct level of granularity, and how do you adjust the granularity in a location? My spelling is deteriorating. It's so nice to hear you guys talk, uh, knowing that you're in Portland and I'm here, and and I'm just hearing you say the words, and they, they just appear here on my screen. It's magic. <laughs> it is really cool. Well, also you can put voices and faces to the names that are usually in a chat room. Mm -hmm. I think that's five minutes. I think it's over. Uh, do yeah. you have to stop recording? I don't know. Uh, he didn't actually tell us how to do it. Did he? Uh, I think he has to do it because he has the password. Oh, I don't remember what he had on yeah. Friday. Yeah. So he basically comes through and logs in, turns on the recording and logs, but he's been jumping around. All right. I think I found his, what he's using. Oh, well, I got this working. Geocode.arcgis.com. How does that look? Uh, what am I looking at? Let's see. Nope. Yeah, oh, sure. Hide. Right. Well, that. Oh. But you asked about the three settings. It's hide, show map, and description. Text only. Uh, it, the change is this. Previously, I had a pop up. Now I have a roll down. I like the roll down. Um, I need to change what's under it because it's really messy now because I just moved it around. Basically, unless you're looking, it's just going to show these two things. Text only. I'm not sure that's clear. Like, I may change the show map and description. Ultimately, it doesn't mean in the background. I may change the actual textual description. Of the yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I also have a, okay. oh, well, okay. So maybe, uh, so these are all should be a preview button. So it shows you what, what it's going to do too. That's next. Okay. That's next. Okay. Yeah. But because yeah, these are all the old buttons, but it, well, I'll show you. So if I clear this all out and I'll put back instead of Los Angeles, let's say I'm in, you know, if I actually hit the locate button, that's HTML5 geolocation. Mm -hmm. If I hit this button here, which I'm going to be redesigning as the old button, it does two things. It fills in all of. I mean, do you want to sh do you share this? Yeah, I can. Although now the button isn't working. 
But oh, anyway, I probably just broke it when I was fiddling around. But that button basically pulls up. There it is. Oh, it just takes. Not only does it pull up the location here with all the boxes, it uses it to generate this up here mm. and look at the time zone. Mm. It automatically reset it to wherever the. Mm. So that fix I did earlier. So basically, it will automatically change the locate the displayed time of the post to wherever not local to the site, but local to wherever you just looked up location for. Mm -hmm. But this whole area here is messy. So it's I just spend all this time learning how to hide it effectively using all of the WordPress tools for it. So that basically now I can make it look a little better. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Known has a like a Docker image that you can just install and play with. Well, you've been here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Docker Hub. And now we're going to wrap up in a moment. Uh, so I return to the main room. Let me. Let me think about what I'm just looking for. Um, so it's actually a paid. Uh, it's like a cloud service that he's using. I'm not sure if this one param is his client. Uh, ID or something. Well, I know he's using a variety of different sources, including his old company, Triolocate, which yeah. he's no longer affiliated with. Are you ready to, you ready to wrap up? up? Well, we wrapped. Great. We were waiting to leave the room and join the other room. So maybe Bye. you want to re-record in there. Bye.